Hey everybody, Rhett from Astartes Gaming here, back with another episode of our RimWorld War Let's Play. So, uh, it's been a few days. Uh, I vaguely remember where we're at, but uh, you binge watchers out there are probably um, far more familiar with what's going on than I am. But we'll figure it out as we go. Anyways, I do know that we had sent... Uh, I'm blanking on everybody's names. I have so many names I have to remember at this point uh, through our various playthroughs that it's difficult to keep track. We sent Fleming and Pettit and they are trying to grab uh, whatever was in here. Some item. I'm, I'm sure it'll come to me. But uh, we have an army of turtles between us and the item. So this is going to be so incredibly annoying and tedious. If you've ever fought turtles before, you know what I'm talking about. They're really small targets and they're really hard to kill. So this is going to be... And pardon my language here, but an absolute shit show, for lack of a better term. And so we're just going to have to do it. But there's going to be a lot of kiting. The one good thing about facing turtles is they're slow. So hopefully we can outrun them and we're just going to have to take some pot shots and then run to a different part of the map. Take some more pot shots, run, you get the idea. Uh, one concern I have though is they can attack the truck. The truck is a pawn. And if they destroy it, then we're walking home, so uh, we'll want to avoid that, if at all possible. Fleming, where are you? Uh-oh. That's not good. Did Fleming just disappear? Crap. Fleming, where'd you go? Oh, God. Um, that's bad. Okay. I'm gonna reload and make sure that he didn't just vanish into the ether. Okay, we're back. So, uh, let's see if we can make this work. He's here. We can see him here. So when I unload driver, why is it doing that? No. Um, crap. Let's see. Did they both just disappear? You know what probably happened? I bet they, they unloaded into this area and it's jumping them out to the world map. So let me try this one more time. And I'm going to move the truck up a little bit. Okay, let's try this one more time. We'll be smart about it. So we're going to draft the truck, move it out of the little border area. Then we'll undraft it. Then we will unload the driver and the passenger. Okay, that worked. So my suspicions were correct. That was the issue. Now that we have that out of the way, let's start killing some turtles. I'm going to draft these guys and move them... Maybe over here, I don't want to lure them in this direction because, if, again, if they attack the truck, we're screwed. So maybe if we come out here, we can engage them from that spot. And it definitely looks like we're faster. So as long as we keep a decent distance between us and them, I think we'll be okay. And we're going to try to, again, lure them away from our vehicle. Oh, wow, look at you going. One shot, one kill. Um, move this way. Try to get them coming at you. Fleming, go ahead and start firing your... MP18 or whatever it is. Okay, there's a hit. Okay, can't let them get too close. Let's pull out now. Alright, yeah, they're real slow. Yeah, keep coming after us. Stay away from the truck. Nice. Fleming, please hit something. Okay, there we go. One, one shot finally landed. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to micro the hell out of this. So, whatever these guys are doing, hopefully it's the right thing, because I, I can't really take my eyes off this, or we're going to get uh, mobbed by turtles. Run over there. Okay, while they're doing that, let's check in over here. Um, it looks like things are going okay. Everybody's got a job to do. Oh, wow. It would be great if we had some lightning hit the turtles. We'll try to collect their corpses and bring them back with us. There's really no reason not to, because we have the truck. So, yeah, we'll do that. Whatever there's room for, we'll bring back. There was also some jade, it looked like. Paradigm production is done, so we can start making uh, painkillers. Fantastic. Uh, hopefully, you know what, I'm going to pause and check. I just want to make sure I have other research queued up. I'm pretty sure I do. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, trenches of World War II, early trenches, that is, um, ammo crates, MG-34s, and 
howitzers. We definitely want that. What to do after that? What is this stuff? Old prosthetic eye. What is that? Just like a glass eye. Old prosthetic foot. Hand. Um, we have synthetic organs. I should do bionics. That's going to take a long time. But that is something I'd like to do. Uh, a lot of this stuff would be... Actually, multi-analyzer is probably pretty important. Did I, I did mending, right? Yeah. That should have been done a while ago. Actually... Hmm, no. Nope. Let's do multi-analyzer. That way we can make our further research go faster. Yeah, that's looking good. I already have access to some mortars, so I don't know if I'm going to do the vanilla one. I might. I might, but we're going to unlock a bunch through all of our artillery research in the World War One, World War Two era stuff. And I think we have we have this one, too. Yeah, the Cohorn. So... I guess I'll figure out what to do next after after these are done. But that's good enough for now. Okay, you've downed one. We're gonna need to finish them off. Well, you know, if they get back up after they've been downed, they're not gonna be hostile, so... Pettit, you better run, man. What are you waiting around for? But yeah, they will, uh, they will no longer be hostile if they get back up. So we don't really need to concern ourselves with it, but whatever we're getting out of these turtles, you know, one more would be nice. And they'll probably just end up bleeding to death anyways. Ooh, destroyed your kidney. Yikes. There's another one down. Oh, I thought that was one sneaking in from the back. I thought they were about to clever girl us or something, but no. That was a Mega Scarab. Okay, there's another down. Looks like three left. Let's start retreating, because uh, you guys are a little bit slow on that sometimes. I don't know why I keep going cover to cover. I think it's just habit at this point, but obviously we don't need cover when we're dealing with turtles. Oh, that one's not dead. Okay, so there's still four left, although you're probably dying. Uh, no, you're not. Also a kidney. Who's shooting people in the kidneys? All right, now he's dead. Somebody has it out for kidneys. Come on. Let's get this over with. There's another one down. I'll let you fire that volley and then we're gonna bail. I'm cutting that awful close. Go, 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 go. Fleming, run. Run to there. The thing is, and I don't know why, but in this playthrough, if we get touched in melee, they pretty much go down immediately. It might be because we don't really have a lot of blunt, or really any armor, to be honest. That could be why. But I'm not entirely sure what it is. Let's actually look at that. So, gear-wise... there is, I mean, it's 8%. That's not a lot, but it's, it's not nothing. But I've noticed that just a, a single melee hit is often enough to put Pettit down. Um, I... I haven't necessarily noticed the same thing about Fleming, but I haven't really seen him in a lot of melee combat. I just know that anytime Pettit gets touched, he falls down, which is weird because he's not bad at melee combat. He's got a five, and he does have a, a melee weapon to switch to. And obviously he can use his, um, his rifle as a melee weapon if necessary, too. Oh, did lightning hit this one? Um, could you go put that out? You already drafted, so just run over there and kind of stomp it. Uh, Fleming, I need you to finish this guy off. And we'll do a little bit of resource gathering before we leave. Okay, you are going to come in here. We'll get all the tortoises moved inside there. Wait, these are tortoises, right? Yeah. I've been calling them turtles, but they're tortoises. Similar, but not the same thing. Oh, phantometric power cell. That's what we were after. Right. Uh, okay. So let's just make a quick stockpile zone here. And we will allow everything except for chunks. So anything that can be hauled in here will be hauled in here except for the chunks. And so that should mean the turtles. Let's go through and just queue up a bit of mining. We want that 
Is there anything else? Ah, there's a bit of steel there. Any compacted machinery? That would be nice. No. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything. I don't even know if this steel is worth it, to be honest, but I'll, I'll queue it up and we'll just leave whenever we're ready. Uh, okay, so back here. 129 wood. You know what? We should harvest some uh, cacti as well. Let's see. Chop wood. I'll just do that. I think that's all of them. It's clearly not all of them. Oh, did we get that one? Yeah, we did. Okay. Now, that tool will only work on cacti that are ready to be harvested. How did I miss these? Well, there we go. Uh, got that one. Okay. No, no, it looked like it worked on all of them. But sometimes what you'll have to do is you'll have to do cut plant. Yeah, see, it won't work on that one. If you do cut plant, though, it'll work. But if I do cut plant on the entire area, it's going to do, like, grass and stuff, too. So I try not to do that. That's probably good enough. And you know what? I'm going to cancel this. Okay. So one last thing before we get everybody moving. I'm just, I'm just going to throw some sleeping spots in here. So that if they decide that they want to rest before they start working on this stuff, uh, they can do that. As soon as you're done putting that fire out, I'll let you uh, kind of go about your business. I think I need to unload the food as well. They have simple meals on them, but obviously they're going to need to eat other stuff. So let's drop the pemmican. Unforbid it. They'll carry it indoors where they can eat it. I'm not going to drop the medicine because they don't need it for anything. Okay, and let's check back in over here. So the cafeteria is sort of finished. What we're going to do now is we're going to floor this off. I will no, not yet, because I haven't decided on what floors I want to use. I mean, I've kind of decided, but I don't have the ability to do it. I want to use these ones. Well, either limestone and slate or marble and slate, but one of the two. Because I like that checkered floor pattern. We want to do auto doors here, so we need to research that first. I'm fairly certain that we do not have the ability to make those yet. Yeah. I guess in the meantime, what we can do is we can do wooden doors. They will be faster than steel doors, and so that should help preserve the temperature. But we'll, we'll do that for now. Eventually, they're going to be steel auto doors, though, so that they're really fast. And I don't know that I'm going to airlock this, because that would just be wasted space. But obviously, having your freezer airlocked is a good idea. What else do we have going on? We've got a lot of mining queued up over here. Nobody is dismantling this stuff. Why not? Also, why is that forbidden? Why is that even there? Whatever. I, I bet Grace probably tried to put it on. Because she's the only one without a clothing assignment. So that's entirely possible. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we need to make some room over here. I think that's why stuff is getting dumped over here. Because obviously this is full. Uh, the medicine can probably make its way indoors. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. But in the meantime, I could put it here. Manufactured medicine. And I will unforbid that now so it can be hauled. So we'll get that inside. I don't mind if the weapons stay out here. The kibble can stay out here too. We should probably get all the textiles into some storage area inside and definitely the silver because um, obviously enemies can come and grab that. Um, I mean, eventually it should all get moved inside because we do have designated stockpile areas inside or at least we will have them. So, yeah, eventually they should make their way in there. Um, I believe that was the door. Now I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, that looks centered. That's, what, four, four? Yep. Okay, that works. Uh, I believe this should be walled as well. 
And I don't know what kind of floors I'm going to do in here. It really makes no difference. They can be concrete. They can be this flagstone. It, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to be spending significant time in there. At least they shouldn't be. It's, it's the freezer after all. How is this stuff coming along? Already half grown. Wow, that's pretty good. It is rice, and this is very fertile soil. Let's see. Yeah, 200% fertility. So that's, I think, probably the highest we could possibly get. And are you pleased? Let's see. Cabin fever. Well, we can fix that. And then he ate without a table. I am probably going to give everybody their own little table in their bedroom. Just because a lot of pawns like to take meals with them. And then as soon as they wake up, they'll go eat. And so, even if I have a bunch of tables in the cafeteria area, they'll still eat without a table. So I, I figure if I put one in the corner of their bedroom with some places to sit, they will eat their breakfast there or whatever. And then we'll have long tables in here where they can kind of come have their dinner together. And hopefully that's enough tables to get them to eat at them pretty consistently. I may need to have just a couple scattered around the, the major work areas. Because I've noticed sometimes they'll go to work first and then eat their breakfast while they're working. And obviously when they do that, then having a table in their bedroom doesn't really cover us. But we'll figure it out. So you guys did decide to sleep. That's fine. Uh, looks like you got that little bit of jade mined out. And oh wow, somebody went cactus butchering because a lot of them are down already. So there is slate here. Do we have slate? anywhere on the map here. I'm going to pause really quickly. Actually, you know what? They're asleep, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, slate. Oh, yeah, we have a ton of slate. Why did I think we didn't? We have plenty of slate. What we don't have is the lighter stone. I think there's trace amounts of marble. No, limestone. Okay, so there is a bit of limestone, and we are harvesting that. Let's make sure we get every little bit. Oh, I missed one. And there'll be more floors under there too. So, we may have enough limestone to make that work. How much did we get already? 51. And we have 120 slate. So we can start on that. And that'll give us an idea as to how much we'll need. Marble slate, limestone slate. So it's two and two. Um, so we're gonna need 136 of each. That's, that should be attainable, because we did not harvest even half of the limestone over there. And we have 51. So as long as we get 100 more, we'll be fine, and it looks like we should be able to do at least that. Uh, oh, they got those doors done quick. I also want some steel grating in here. And... All right, so that's coming along pretty nicely. Low medicine. Uh, where's the other 18? Somebody carrying it, hopefully? Be pretty concerned if it just up and disappeared. Okay, Risling is hauling it, perfect. Right, good enough. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with, I might just tear this down. I might tear this down and just have this be big open fields. You know what, I'm kind of thinking this would make a fantastic prison yard. Although the problem with that is they could get out really easily with stuff like this. So I don't know if I want to do that. Again, it, I initially wanted to put the prison over here. This was going to be the main prisoner area. This was going to be where they would mine and stuff and we could have a little outdoor yard for them here maybe but having just a huge farm or series of farm plots I wouldn't have one big one it would be a bunch of individual crops but that would be fantastic for growing stuff and I could make them do all the work but then I'd have to make sure there was no doors because if there's a prison break they'll just pick the locks and run straight through them it doesn't even take them a second to do it and so they would just walk right out here and be gone. Or here. So yeah, I have to make this completely inaccessible, which isn't necessarily a problem. I could have other ways 
to make that work, but obviously we need a way to get into here. And so I have to make sure that that doesn't allow the prisoners an easy escape route. Maybe have it only accessible from the base? That's something we could do? And then again, if I put turrets in here, as I talked about, then uh, the, the turrets could watch over the prisoners for us. It's something to think about. But then I'd have to completely overhaul my plans, which isn't necessarily a problem. I wonder what these would give us if we deconstructed them. I know these just give you... I actually don't remember what those give you. We'll deconstruct one of them, just or one of each, just to see. If it's anything valuable, we'll do it, but... When it says concrete, I'm never quite sure what it will give you, because concrete floors cost steel, but I associate concrete with, like, stone. Because there's, as far as I know, there's no steel in concrete. Uh, it's sort of like... Uh, like, what exactly is in concrete? It's basically... It's not sand, but it's, like, ground up... Ground up stone with, uh... Crap. I, I've made concrete before. I can't remember exactly what you put in it. But generally, you go bag... Or you go buy a, a big bag of, like, the dry concrete. Which is just ground up, like, stone powder. And then you add water to it and mix it. Where do I want lights in here? I'm thinking maybe... Well, it's going to be hard to center on this unless I do the big ones. So I'll just do the big ones. Uh, power... Not power. Furniture. Large shan... Actually, do I want to do those? I've been using these. Yeah, I'll just use a bunch of these. So we'll do... One here and one here. And then maybe one out here. That's probably fine. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Got some chem fuel. Nice. By the way, I did the math on this because we actually picked one up in our Warhammer 40k playthrough. So I think I have one of these in all but the Star Wars one at this point. I did the math just to see how productive they are, and it's actually a very good turnaround if you're using the chem fuel in a chem fuel generator to make more energy. So I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I calculated the kilowatt hours that this thing requires and I think it was like 72 kilowatt hours to produce 75 chem fuel so essentially you take the 300 watts and divide it by uh, 10 yeah 10 days or multiply it by 10 days so that you know okay it's using a constant 300 watts over a 10 day period to produce 75 chem fuel and I think that was like 72 kilowatt hours then oh nice the research is done that was quick then you take that 75 chem fuel and you put it into a chem fuel generator, which uh, uses 4.5 chem fuel per day to produce a constant uh, 1,000 watts. And so if you do the math there for that 75 chem fuel, you're basically getting 400 kilowatt hours. And so you're getting more than five times the energy back, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, of course, we're using it for a variety of things. We're also putting it toward our vehicle um, fuel, so we're not getting that full amount of energy. But it is still, you know, quite valuable. And then we don't have to commit other resources to producing chem fuel, like wasting our wood and whatnot. Uh, so let's do that. But yeah, I, it's definitely a valuable item. Uh, those are already marked for hauling. I need to go through and do this. Uh, oh, that can be unforbidden now. I always have to unforbid the ones next to the corners because they tend to build those first and then the corner gets blocked off. So, yeah, it's a bit annoying, but it's just something I've learned to deal with. So this no longer needs to be forbidden. Whoops, wrong layer. There we go. And you can be unforbidden as well. We should probably mine this out too. We'll just do a bit of this hallway right here and that little doorway. So the cafeteria will be accessible from two sides. And I'm going to leave the doors permanently open. The reason I put doors there is so they count as their own separate rooms. And also because we are in um, a mountain base. If there's an infestation, having 
multiple like door checkpoints is a really good idea. You basically want to airlock everything. That way, if the infestation triggers in here, as we run out, we can close the doors and at least it's confined to that room until they break through the walls or something. Or if it happens in the hallway, then we can run in here and close the door behind us or whatever. It's, it's just safer that way. Same goes for like a, a raid or something. If they break through here, uh, the more doors they have to fight their way through, obviously the more opportunities you have to set up your defense. So it just, it's just a good idea. Okay. How are you guys doing? Uh, you're still cutting down trees. Did everything get hauled into here? It looks like it. I don't know how much food they have left. I mean, I know exactly how much food they have left. I don't know how long that's going to last them. I might just tell them to pack up as soon as they're done with what they're doing. Done with what they're doing. I don't know if I said that weird. What is this again? Limestone? I wonder if it's worth... Uh, I think we have enough. I think we finished this, didn't we? No. Yeah, they laid down the slate. They haven't laid down the limestone yet. But the limestone is still available. There's plenty of it. I think we'll be okay. Because it's going to be really heavy to bring... Okay, so it's steel for both. Got it. Then it's not worth it. It's going to be really heavy to bring all this wood back with us. And I think we need the wood more than we need the limestone. It's purely decorative. So, yeah. I mean, it would be nice for, like, statues and stuff, though. Because we don't have access to marble. I'm going to do it. I don't know. I'm going to send them home as soon as they look like they're going to run out of food. So, whether or not they get to this, or whether or not they will get to this, I don't know. But I'll queue it up just in case they run out of projects. Oh, and look, our cloth harvest is coming in. We're finally able to make... Finally be able to make uniforms for people. Uh, Risling, I believe you still need one. Yeah, you're just wearing a, a tribal outfit with a tactical harness over it. And Murta is basically uh, like a flasher, just wearing a, a long coat with nothing under it. So we'll finally be able to change that. In fact, I should queue those projects up. Uh, one thing I need to do for this recycle apparel, I should have done this a while ago, is... Well, I said... Not to do anything that isn't dead man's. But regardless, I don't want any... Where would that be under? It'd be under here. Yeah, I don't want any of the Royal Empire stuff getting taken apart. Regardless of quality or whatever. And we'll say no to the tactical harnesses as well. That, I think, is their power armor. I'm not going to use any of that. Eventually, we may make our own, but I haven't done the textures for it or anything. But it is something I could do. Clothing, armor. There are elite helmets in there. Where's our helmet? Oh, our helmet isn't considered clothing. It's, it's made on a different bench, so I don't think it can be taken apart here. I think it needs to be smelted. Yeah, I don't mind if long coats get taken apart, but I do need to be careful because I want all of the alpaca ones to stay. Um, I think that's probably good enough. Yeah, as long as it's Dead Man's Apparel, I don't really care. But I don't want the uniforms getting done no matter what because at some point I know I'm going to toggle this and be like, oh yeah, go ahead and get rid of those. And I'm not going to remember that the, the uniforms are part of that or I wouldn't remember that like oh the uniforms are going to get done too so this way even if I mistakenly toggle this that stuff is never going to get taken apart so let's go ahead and add the bills now we got to find the damn things make uniform royal empire yes I think we're going we're going to make Murta an officer's uniform because you know what no I'm just going to make two regular ones it's easier this way two regular ones because I still haven't decided on their rank, and I haven't decided how I want to represent that yet. Some people have suggested a mod that allows you to change people's uh, titles, and I, 
I kind of like that idea, but I kind of don't because I like having sort of their class as well. So Cooper's a scout, for example. Uh, Pettit is a sniper. Um, obviously, I don't have to change them, but for the the soldiers, I want their their rank represented somewhere. And so, if for example, I want to show Cooper's rank, like Private Cooper, uh, I'd have to put that here. And then it wouldn't show Scout anymore, so I don't know if that's the way I want to do it. I could add it in front of their name. The problem with that is as we get more colonists, it starts to truncate their names because they don't have enough room to show the full name up here. So eventually, if he was like Private Cooper, it might just say like PVT dot C or something and I wouldn't be able to see the name so I don't know if that's the solution either but we'll come up with something I'm sure I just don't know what the best way to go about it would be okay so we need another wooden door here again I am putting doors everywhere and then I guess I did a steel door here, so I'll do a steel door over here. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, we need to do the floors first. It's going to be steel grating. And then we go back to structures and we do a 1x2 steel door. And we'll set that to hold open too. Okay, can you reconnect to something a little bit more close? No? Why are those not powered? Oh. Uh, okay, why didn't they do it here? I, I swear I had it drawn there. I guess I didn't. Uh, but that's connected. Maybe I'll run one across the hall here. Just for some redundancy's sake. And obviously this will need to get powered as well. Uh, oh, I completely forgot to do something. So we're going to have to tear down some of these walls because I need coolers, don't I? So we're going to do them like this, I think. I might add more elsewhere, like maybe on this side, but I'm just going to blow the heat into the hallways and let the, the ambient temperature of the base sort it out. I don't think heat is going to be a problem in here. Even during the summer, we're looking at parts of our base uh, down in like... What was this? 14 degrees Celsius, which is pretty chilly. Uh, outside, yeah, 14 degrees Celsius, and we're in the middle of summer. So, I think it's a cold enough map where just ditching the ambient heat into the base is actually going to be a benefit. If we get a heat wave, that might change, but we do have coolers set up. And they're just, they're set to cool down the base if it gets warmer than 20 degrees Celsius. And when they're not, or when it's colder than that, it just runs at the, the minimum power. And realistically, I could just turn them off during the winter and whatnot, but they'll they'll probably never never need to run during that time anyways, so they'll be on minimum power. So Bender, we need to flesh out your room a little bit. I would like a few things in there. A sculptor's table would be one of them. It can be steel if we have enough steel. Do we have enough steel? Yeah. So a steel sculptor's table. Where do I want it? Um, I was going to do the multi-analyzer up here, so I could do this here. I could do it there and squeeze another bench in that way. What other sort of art stuff do we have? Let's see. What would that be under? radio station low powered radio to contact near receivers is this just an alternative to the comms console I think it is I might use that it's the same size I honestly like I like the design of it better but I don't like that it doesn't quite match the same perspective like everything in RimWorld you're sort of looking down at it at an angle so you're not quite directly on top of it, even though the game is top-down, as far as the, the grid is concerned. But everything has sort of a, a perspective as if you were looking at it slightly at an angle. 
but a lot of mods don't quite capture that well, and so you can see this is basically looking straight down at it, or at least close, whereas this sort of, you can see the front of it slightly. So I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use these or not, just because that type of thing bugs me, but whatever. Um, a big giant red cross that gives indication for a drop in delivery zone. Okay, so when we order through the radio station, we can put one of these down and that's where they'll, they'll ditch stuff. That's cool. I like that. Uh, but anyways, is it under joy? Typewriting table. Yeah, that would be a potential option. Ooh, I like the side view of that actually. It, it looks a bit flat from here, but it actually has, like, it conveys depth pretty well this way. Maybe I'll put that in his actual, like, sleeping area. Uh, I don't know, but I do want him... Actually, it could go there. I'm not going to build it yet because I don't have a lot of wood. But that is another art thing that he could be doing. And then painting is another one, but we don't have access to that yet. So, let's see. Oh, that's a really tiny piano. I thought it'd be like a 2 by one or a 3 by one Let's just do the sculptor's table for now. And I'll put it here so that I can squeeze in something else right there. And I'll give him one of these. Oh, I can't build? Ah, god damn it. Well... Okay, um, scratch that then. I'll have to put something else there where he doesn't, necessar that doesn't necessarily need to sit to do it. Because sculpting does take a little while to do, and if he doesn't have a chair, it's going to take even longer. Alright, well, things are coming along. How are you guys doing? Um, you've got 30 pemmican left quite a bit of wood and you got some of the limestone oh you got most of it okay then I'm gonna have them remove these floors chop down that cactus and I think that'll be it then we'll send them home and hopefully they have room for all of it it's very possible that we don't it is very possible that we don't all right and so I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here I will likely take care of that stuff off camera and send them home and maybe they will arrive at the start of next episode. Uh, you know, I'll start recording when they get back. Unless, obviously, you know, something interesting happens between now and then. Uh, oh, cool, you're starting the uniforms. So, yeah, that's the plan. We'll see if things go according to plan. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I had a great time playing some RimWorld with you, and I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode.